to trickle in. Awesome. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to another author program with uh, Doug Alderson. He's done, is it two? Two previous ones with us before? Yes, yep. two. Yeah. two previous one. America's Alligator and uh, Florida Attractions were the two previous mm -hmm. ones. So we're glad right. to have you back. Um, I'm going to share this program on our Facebook page so that anyone via Facebook can also watch and we're then then we'll get started. So let me set that up super fast and then we'll be good. Okay. The stream is setting up and it looks like we are live on Facebook. And actually I think most everyone who registered to attend is here. So we can go ahead and get started. I'm gonna give a little introduction to our author who's with us today, Doug Alderson. Um, he is the author of several books, including America's Alligator, Wild Florida Waters, Waters Less Traveled, New Dawn for the Kissimmee River, Encounters with Florida's Endangered Wildlife and a New Guide to Old Florida Attractions. He has won four first place Royal Palm Literary Awards for travel books and several other state and national writing and photography awards. Additionally, his articles and photographs have been featured in numerous magazines. Doug received the inaugural Environmental Service Award by Paddle Florida in 2015 for conspicuous commitment, unflagging dedication, and love of Florida's natural environment. For several years, he coordinated Florida's designated paddling trail system and helped to establish the 1,515 mile Florida Circumnavigational Saltwater Paddling Trail. He is currently the Outreach and Advocacy Director for the Apalachicola Riverkeeper. I hope I said that right. Good job, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Did, my, did my best. Um, and so without further ado, welcome Doug, and uh, I'm gonna turn it over to him. There will be time for questions at the end if anybody has them, so feel free to either submit a question using the Q&A feature or leave a comment. Yes, thank you, Madison, and uh, it's great to be back at the library, and someday I'll visit in person, but for now we're doing virtual, and so I'm going to take you on a journey of Florida's rivers, and it's going to be geographic from the Panhandle on down to South Florida. And so many of you have not been on all of these rivers. You may have been on a couple. Um, and I explore most of these rivers by kayak. So um, most of the photos you'll see have been taken from a kayak. That differs, so I differ in a little bit from a lot of other photographers who um, may not have the room to take all of their equipment on a kayak. So I, I tend to have a dry bag and I have my camera and everything. and. Um, I now have a smaller camera that has a nice 600 millimeter zoom lens built into it. And so that helps me a lot before I fiddle with these lenses and I'm floating down a river and dodging uh, logs and things like that. So uh, it can be a little tricky. So I'm gonna open up this PowerPoint. And and if for some reason you can't see it, uh, Madison can let me know. But this is uh, going to start in the, the farthest west. This river is on the border of the Alabama line with Florida. This is the Perdido. And these are beautiful rivers in the Panhandle. They have a lot of sand banks. They're kind of a golden color most of the time. Uh, it's like a tannic water. Uh, and tannic is basically just from vegetation that's leaching. It's kind of like a tea. Uh, tea brewing, it comes from different swamps and things, but against the white sand, it's often a golden color and they're very pretty. This is their Perdido River. It goes for quite a while. You can go for three or four days on their Perdido. There are a couple of log jams there, but you get down to Perdido Bay and this is what you see sometimes. It's a beautiful sunset on Perdido Bay. And I was with a group called Paddle Florida, which does trips around the state. <clears throat> And I've joined them on their various trips over the years and really enjoyed uh, the company of a lot of other people and, and the catering and the, the talks and the uh, entertainment they often provide. I'm not being paid by them. I'm just, <laughs> just mentioning that. 
Um, and this is some scenes along the Blackwater River and Juniper Creek. And they do have mountain laurel. This is what this is, this flower is. And that's something uh, you don't see in Florida too much, but you do see it in the panhandle in a couple of places. And Juniper Creek is one of those places. And the Blackwater River, very well known for its beautiful water and the white sand banks. <clears throat> so we're moving slowly east. And this is called Holmes Creek and it's fed by different springs. This is a wintertime shot. So the beauty of all our rivers in Florida, especially central and north Florida, is that you can see fall colors and you also have a tint of, you have a hint of winter because a lot of the trees lose their leaves. And so it, it looks actually like winter, like you would see up north. <clears throat> and this is one of those springs on Holmes Creek, beautiful cypress spring, and it doesn't seem to be tainted by a lot of the algae you'll see in uh, some of the springs in central Florida. And so they, the most pristine springs left in the state right now are in the Panhandle. This is Econfina Creek, and this is the main water source for the Panama City area and several um, second magnitude springs and great swimming and kayaking. I did get hit pretty hard by Hurricane Michael in 2018, and this is a shot on the right of some of the aftermath of the hurricane, but it's still uh, fairly open, most of it, um, and, it's, and the springs, of course, are still uh, beautiful. The Choctahatchee is little known to a lot of people. It's, it's a fairly major river. It flows, it starts in Alabama. And uh, I did a Paddle Florida trip and we, we camped at a, a beautiful spring, Morrison Spring, very large uh, first magnitude spring on the uh, Choctahatchee. And um, it's just one of those wild big rivers that are they're fairly undeveloped. And a lot of those in the Panhandle really have little development. <clears throat> The Chipola River is near Mariana, uh, so we're moving east, and it does have a couple caves on the river. So it's the only river that has any caves that are dry most of the time. I was scouting this river on Tuesday for a trip we're doing on Saturday, and um, we want to stop and see some of these, uh, this one cave called the Ovens. Looks like a big oven. It has some beautiful springs. This has the largest number of springs on any Panhandle River. I think it has 53 springs. So the Apalachicola River in Basin. So I do work for the Apalachicola River Keeper, so I'm very familiar with it. And we do a trip on the river called River Trek every, every year, which we're doing in less than two weeks. And we do a five-day kayak trip from the top to the bottom, 107 miles. And the shot on the left is a steamboat. This river was very popular for steamboats. Um, and at one time they had probably over 100 steamboats. Right now, of course, very little traffic on the river. It's very wild. And, um, and you won't see, maybe you might see two or three fishermen on most days, and that's about it. But this is the remnants of the steamboat Barbara Hunt, which was the last paddle wheeler on the river. And it was scuttled near Chattahoochee in, 19, in the 1940s. This drawing on the right was a drawing uh, made in about 1830s of uh, Creek Indians uh, paddling down the river. This is a scene from our river trek and we camp across from Allen Bluff, which is the largest bluff in Florida. And you wouldn't think you're in Florida on this river. The bluff is over hundred feet tall above the water and it's just like a sheer cliff. There's a beautiful hiking trail on the other side too that goes to the top of the bluff. But we camp across and the sunset hits the bluff and it's just beautiful of the different colors uh, as the sun is hitting the bluff. And the Apalachicola has an incredible floodplain that goes up to five miles wide and over 400 different side creeks and sloughs. And this is one of those. You can see the kayaker there and you can see in the foreground a cypress knee. The cypress knee pretty much marks the height of the floodplain at different levels. The cypress knee is probably over 15 feet Hall. So you can see the fluctuation of the, uh, the different floods on the Apalachicola River, mostly floods in the wintertime and early spring. And we camp uh, on the river trek in October. It's a basically a low water month. 
unless there's a hurricane or a tropical storm. And there's lots of sandbars. And so we camp on the sandbars and it's just very relaxing. We often have speakers and, um, and dinner. And it's just a, a great experience, kind of like summer camp for adults, is what I call it. There's a lot of wildlife along the river. I've seen black bears and I also see their tracks sometime. You can see this is a black bear track. It goes to the water and then it disappears. And we didn't see where the bear came out. So he may have swam across the river and they, they swim pretty well. So it's, it's always exciting to see either signs of black bear or the bears themselves. Lots of bald eagles. And this one was drying its wings after fishing uh, along the river. And these birds on the left are avocets. We saw it in the sunset, I mean, sunrise morning uh, across from Allen Bluff. And these are mostly coastal birds, but we did see them pretty far up river, about 80 miles up river. And we do a lot of swim breaks. And this is the group a couple of years ago taking a swim break. And we have another group of about 14 people going in a couple of weeks. So we're looking forward to that. It is our major fundraiser, and we raise um, over $60,000 a year on River Trek for the river people. And these are scenes along some of the sloughs along the Apalachicola, some incredible twisted cypress trees, unusual shapes. This one, I call it Cypress Angel. It kind of has a human looking look to it, but it's just amazing how you can explore these sloughs. And I, there's still sloughs I haven't explored yet by kayak and some amazing cypress trees you can see here. This one looks like an alien. This other one has this huge growth on it. Um, some of these, these cypress trees are old growth, but they, they are hollow or they are deformed. And so the loggers in the 1920s didn't cut them for that reason. The Oklockney is getting closer to Tallahassee, another river that drains from Georgia. And um, just a beautiful trip. You can do several days on this trip and camp in uh, mostly national forest primitive campgrounds. And this is a side slough along the Oklockney. It's a very wild river in most places and just a, just a great experience to explore. Uh, a lot of these photos I, and trips I've taken over the last 12 or 15 years. And so it's a collection of probably a couple hundred different kayak trips uh, in Florida. Uh, and that basically makes up the book. <clears throat> the Sopchapi River is what I call a blackwater river or a swamp river. Basically, it's fed by swamps, dark water, but it's very clean water. So don't let the color confuse you with pollution. These are natural tannins that come in from the swamps. And the, the soft, choppy, soft choppy has some beautiful cypress knees and roots. It's just very artistic that when you go in low water, it's just a beautiful scene for several miles. And in the springtime, there is wild azalea. And that's one of the, I think, the, uh, one of the prettiest flowers in the springtime. And it's great to see that on a river from a kayak. This is the Wakulla River. So near Tallahassee, we have some spring-fed rivers, and this is fed by the big Wakulla Springs, one of the biggest springs in the world. This is the uh, what they call the back jungle near the uh, head spring. And for years, I, I led a wildlife photography tour with the jungle boat at the state park, and we saw this, this egret uh, getting ready for the evening, um, for the night. And this was taken right before sunset. So the light was coming through the wings. And it's one of my favorite photos. It's a great egret. And it's great to go. And I, I help do a wildlife count on the Wakulla River about every month uh, in the upper part. And these are baby gallinules. So uh, some really neat to see the different birds come out, mostly in the summertime, the young birds. and. Uh, they have probably a low survival rate, but enough of them live to where we see 40 or 50 on any different uh, river trip in Wakulla Springs State Park. And we see lots of comorants. Uh, and this was taken about two months ago on the river. So it's not in the book, this particular photo, but I stuck a couple in there more recently. 
And there are manatees in the Wakulla River along with many of the uh, spring-fed rivers because they like to go up in the wintertime because the springs have a constant temperature and that's warmer than the air and warmer than the ocean. So uh, they are found in the Wakulla River and many springs around Florida that connect to the Gulf. <clears throat> St. Mark's River near Tallahassee is another spring-fed river. It goes down to the Gulf. It's a beautiful place to paddle. And this one shot was taken in early spring when the beautiful vivid colors are coming out. And one of my favorites is the Wasissa River, which is spring fed. It's about 15 miles east of my house. And I see lots of wildlife. It's very marshy and I see a lot of wading birds. And, and this is a, a yellow cry night, her night heron that's a juvenile. So it's very different looking than the parent. And I see lots of gators, never had any problem. I get a lot of questions about the alligator, especially people that are not from the South. And I've never had any issues with alligators being too aggressive. They like to dive in the water and sink, but they don't really come up right next to you and try to grab you or anything. It's, they just like to sink to the bottom where they feel safe. And this one, uh, this shot I took uh, only about three months ago on the Wasissa of female wood ducks. And just what I like to do sometimes, I, I go with other people and it's very social, but if I wanna take wildlife photos, I often go alone and just sit very quietly and pretty soon the wildlife, they, they kind of grow accustomed to me and they just sit there sometimes and feed and, and do their thing. And I just watch very quietly. <clears throat> This one on the left a few years ago, I was on the West Sis and I was just kind of near sunset, just very slowly taking my kayak through the wild rice and the limpkins were getting ready for the night. So I was able, I'm kind of like a peeping Tom, but in a good way, I'm not trying to cause any problems. <laughs> and this limpkin was getting ready for the night. I just took photos, it didn't seem to be aware of my presence. This upper right one is the purple gallinule, which is one of the prettiest uh, birds on the river and not very common. And only a mother could love this face, right? These are brown water snakes, they're not venomous. And this is during the spring mating season, the males on top, the males are always smaller than the females. And uh, I'm with, a, I have a zoom lens, so I'm not like I'm two feet away. And uh, they seem to tolerate my presence pretty well. And lots of turtles on the Florida rivers. This is a cooter, Swanee cooter on the Wasissa close-up view. Again, if you're quiet and you're, you're trying not to get too close, a lot of times the wildlife will tolerate your presence for a while. And you have to be very quiet and just, you don't look at them directly right away. You just kind of sit there for a while. And one time I caught a coyote swimming across the river very fast because there are alligators in the river. And I caught a few shots of it swimming across. This is the only time I've ever seen a coyote swimming like this. <clears throat> the Osceola River is east of, we're moving east of Tallahassee now, and this is a blackwater swamp fed stream, beautiful with beautiful cypress trees and the reflections on these blackwater rivers, it's kind of like a black mirror and they're just really pretty. And there's a place called the Osceola Sinks where the river goes underground and comes up several times and beautiful big limestone boulders. And, and there's the Florida Trail uh, is a hiking trail that goes around these sinks. And so I was on the trail taking photos of the, uh, the scenes and the different sinks. The Osceola has uh, what they call the big rapids, which is about a class two rapids, gives you some excitement. And this is uh, about a year and a half ago. And this is my daughter and she's an adult and she, uh, went with a trip with, with uh, her and a couple of friends of hers. And so it was just a great excitement. She had never been on the rapids before. I caught that expression of surprise she had as she hit the, the white water. Florida does have white water, it's hard to imagine, but it does have a few rapids. And the biggest, of course, I'll show you in a minute is uh, on the Big Shoals and the Suwannee River. And this is the Big Shoals and Calm Stage. This is too low to kayak but it's very pretty and you can, it's a state park and you can hike to it. Um, but I did, I have run the shoals a couple of times and I have tipped over twice. So 
I'm 0 for 2 trying to get through the shoals by a kayak one time and a canoe another time. So it's very tricky when it's really going fast. These are some scenes in the Swanee. Most of the time the Swanee is very mellow and very beautiful and easy to paddle. And I've, I've been on the Swanee many, many times with different groups. This lower one was with the Paddle Florida group, but I've been with other groups and summer camp groups. And it has some beautiful limestone banks and cliffs and places, depends on the water level. The Santa Fe River is spring fed. And it was once notorious for having a naked guy at a spring called Naked Ed. And he would usually be naked or he would wear a loincloth. He, he had done that for about 30 years and now he's no longer there. He's too old now. He's, he needs to be a, like in a rest home almost. But he was a character to meet along the river. Some scenes along the uh, um, Santa Fe River. The Santa Fe River starts uh, up river and it goes underground and it comes back up. So a lot of rivers do that uh, in Florida. It's hard for people to imagine up north that we have these, these rivers that go underground and come back up and sometimes go underground again. But it's great to see otters on these rivers and that's one of my favorite creatures to watch. They're very playful, noisy sometimes. And uh, it's fun to watch them if they don't see you and you can just kind of watch their antics as they play. Very playful animals. And now the rivers are very historic. And this is a postcard from about 1906 of a steamboat on the St. John's River landing at Palatka. And these steamboats would go from Jacksonville, they'd go up to St. John's, they would go up the Silver River, the Oklahoma, then the Silver River to Silver Springs. That was a very popular run in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And these shots were taken along the St. John's and the tributaries. This is a kingfisher. Now, if you've ever seen a kingfisher, it's a very fast bird. It doesn't sit still long. So this was a rare occasion for them to, for this bird to stop because it had a fish. So I was able to take a couple photos of the bird, but most of the time it's moving, moving, moving. And it's like some people, they never really stop and slow down. This upper right is a fish camp uh, near the St. John's River called Johnny Boys and very uh, colorful old Florida style fish camp. Lots of interesting signs. And the St. John's has many lakes, big lakes. And they can be a little tricky if a storm comes up, like this storm is coming up here on Lake St. George, Lake George. The Oklahoma, which goes into the uh, St. John's, we found a log that had these notches in it. We think that were made by loggers probably 100 years ago. And before bridges, a lot of the rivers had to be uh, crossed by ferry boats. And this is a photo from about 1910 of a ferry on the Oklahoma River. And this is a scene paddling the Oklahoma above the Lake Rodman. And it's just a gorgeous wild river. Uh, most of the land around it is owned by the state or federal government. And of course, the Silver River is beautiful. It's mostly in the state park and it's just very scenic. This shot was taken in the winter time. It, it struck me as looking like a painting almost. Um, and it's the only Florida River you'll probably see monkeys. They have a couple troops of monkeys. The monkeys have caused a problem because they, they kind of, there's too many of them, but they were released in the 1930s on an island and they, they wanted to uh, show off the monkeys from a tour boat but the monkeys know how to swim. And so they, they have spread and they have multiplied. And this is a black crown night heron along the, uh, the Silver River. It's a great place to see wildlife. And there's two uh, rivers in Florida named Whiplacoochee. And this one um, is farther south near Dunellen in that area uh, towards Crystal River and very scenic river, lots of limpkins and, and other birds. So I paddled most of this river down to the Gulf. And a beautiful spring fed river near Orlando is the Rock Springs Run Wakiva River. And it starts out with some big springs and a beautiful spring run called the Emerald Cut. Lots of wildlife. I was waiting for some paddlers to come and this beautiful bird came and landed nearby. And this is a 
a uh, gnat catcher and it just landed there and I was able to take a couple pictures of it. Um, so you just never know if you're quiet and still, sometimes birds and other wildlife will come to you. Call a blue gray gnat catcher. One of my favorite birds, we don't see too many of them in North Florida, is the uh, roseate spoonbill, one of the prettiest native birds in Florida. And this, I took this shot from a kayak on the Wakaiva River. This is an early morning shot. We are heading out from the state park on the Wakaiva River. This is on the spring run that goes into the main river and just a beautiful foggy morning. And it's very peaceful, very quiet. And um, that's, you know, the, these rivers, when you go on them, it's just a mellow feeling. You just have this peace come over you. And if you ever want to just quiet down, go on one of these rivers on a quiet morning. Um, some of the rivers are very popular on weekends in the summer, like the Wakaiba. So sometimes if you have time, do a weekday or go early enough to beat the crowds. And Peaceful goes into the Peace River. I was called the Peace River. And uh, a really incredible river for fossils, very famous for fossils. I found these manatee or dugong bones along the riverside there, just laid on the bank. And it's, uh, you have to pay a few dollars for a permit if you want to keep any fossils, but they found, they find big shark's teeth and other, and these dugong bones and other fossils on this river. This is near Fort Myers in that region. This is uh, the lower part near Punta Gorda of the Peace River of a boat about 120 years ago. So these rivers have been enjoyed by, by, by settlers for the you know, last couple hundred years and before that by Native Americans and uh, for probably 15,000 years in Florida. Hillsborough River near Tampa, and it goes right through Tampa, but the upper part is very wild. It goes to the state park, a lot of wildlife, and it does have a small rapids area, shoals area, it's very pretty. And this is a scene uh, from about 1910 in Tampa Bay where the Hillsborough River is coming into Tampa. So I've kayaked part of the Hillsborough River, but never right into Tampa, downtown Tampa like this. I've walked along it, there's a nice walkway along the river for a couple miles in Tampa. The Alifaya, Faya, which is south of Tampa, does have some minor rapids, class one rapids, I guess. And in, along the uh, river, it once was a, a community that housed cir circus performers in the off season. And one man was called a giant and he, had a, he ended up when he retired, he started up a, a bait shop along the river, a fishing place. So people would come and meet the giant. Uh, he was a circus performer at one time. And Fishing Creek is in Southeast Florida, and very wild, famous for uh, its beautiful cypress trees and lots of big alligators. And uh, you can rent a kayak here and explore the river. And it's uh, just check the water levels. It's pretty low at this shot. I was there about a year and a half ago. Very scenic. The Kissimmee River, they just finished the, re the restoration of most of the river. They, the river was, was channelized by the Corps of Engineers in the 60s and early 70s, and they realized the mistake, the wildlife disappeared and the pollution would race faster into Lake Okeechobee. And so the restoration is largely complete, it took several years, a lot of money to uh, restore the original channel, to fill in the ditch. And now you can really explore this river and see lots of wildlife. I was on an expedition many years ago that went from Orlando to Lake Okeechobee through the Kissimmee chain of lakes and the Kissimmee River. We saw these horses that were semi wild, beautiful in one of the uh, channels. And you can see the wide floodplain here in this shot of the Kissimmee River. And it's kind of like the a river through the Everglades environment in the places like this. Now, normally this river goes slow through the floodplain during flood stage. And that's what it's supposed to do. And that's what they're, they've restored. And so hopefully the water will move slowly down into Lake Okeechobee and filter out some of the pollution from development and from the ranches and the agriculture. 
Of course, this was a popular area. Uh, even, even in the late 1800s, this was a large motel or hotel on um, Lake Toho. It's part of the Kissimmee chain of lakes near Kissimmee. Mayaka, if you haven't been there, uh, it's an alligator haven. I've never seen so many alligators and really big ones in the river and the different lakes um, in the state park. So it's a great place to see birds as well, like this black neck still, in this shot. Loxahatchee in your region, it's the wildest uh, river in Southeast Florida. And, um, and you can rent boats and kayak it. And you can also take a tour boat in the state park, in Jonathan Dickinson State Park, and go up to Trapper, Trapper Nelson's home, which was a kind of like a hermit that lived on the river, a character. And he had cabins and like a little zoo that he greeted visitors at one time. Lots of wildlife and just really wild with the palm trees and the, the strangler figs and all kinds of things. Here's a scene of the Miami River um, that was very historic for Seminole Indians and other folks. And it's still there. You can still kayak it or boat it. It's, it's changed quite a bit, as you can imagine, as Miami has grown up around it. But uh, it's still, these rivers are still uh, fun to explore. And that pretty much takes me on most of the tour of the rivers. Uh, here's some facts about some of the rivers, the challenges we have to keep the rivers clean or to restore these rivers. And it, the, uh, the springs are pretty incredible in Florida. We have the largest number of springs in the world. Um, but many of those are impaired because of pollution. Uh, too much nitrogen coming up from agriculture and septic tanks and other in development. So there are efforts being made to restore the springs. We need to keep foreign effort, more effort into uh, restoring these springs and doing our part. And I'm gonna put this list, it's too much to go over in this program. I'm gonna put this list on my website uh, this afternoon. So anybody can go to it and you can also research this online to see different ways that you can uh, reduce your pollution impact to uh, help our different waterways, not just the rivers, but the coast as well and the intercoastal waterway. So some little things like just some more Florida friendly landscape and that's usually more native plants and plants that use less fertilizer and less water. And uh, and I know everybody uses bottled water, but basically we don't really need it for the most part. But the only time I use it is when I'm in a football game, they don't let you bring in water or in an airport, places like that. Otherwise, I have a water purifier and that's what I use for, the, for my water. And it's, it's much better, I think, than bottled water. Just little things like that can help our rivers and our coast. And to look at what we use for fertilizer and when we do it and how much we do it, that's really important because that all adds up when millions of people are fertilizing their lawns and plants and how that some of that washes in to the rivers and some of that goes into the aquifer, which comes up in our springs. So at this point, let me take any questions. But if you want to get involved, there's many groups in Florida. These are a list of statewide groups, but there are also many local and regional groups that I don't have room to list. But there are many opportunities if you want to get involved and many of these groups address water issues, most of them do. And of course, the water keepers, Florida, the different water creek keeper groups, that's the main focus is on water issues for those groups. And the Florida Springs Alliance as well folks, focuses just on spring issues in Florida. Awesome, thank you, Doug. Uh, so I, the Q&A feature is open as well as just the chat. Um, if anybody would like to ask a question, um, also, Doug, if you're able, can you chat your website link into the chat box so if people want to check it out later, they can? Sure. Let me do that. And while he's doing that, if anyone has questions, feel free to leave them. Um, awesome. Thank you. And if you have any questions that maybe appear after the fact, you can also just, you know, email us at, or chat to us on Facebook or social media, and we'd be happy to answer those for you. Um, Wendy asked, where is your favorite place for photographing wildlife during this time of the year and why? Well, I, uh, it's the Wasissa River and I showed you some photos from the Wasissa in the slideshow. And um, partly because it's close to my house. 
I was living down your area, I'd probably go to the Loxahatchee River, mm -hmm. maybe some of the uh, uh, places nearby. But because I live near Tallahassee, I go to the Wasissa and it's, it's always, there's always something there that I can photograph. The birds are kind of used to people, the alligators, the turtles, sometimes otters. And as I showed you the coyote, so there's always something there that I can photograph. Awesome. There's so many rivers in Florida that you can always find a river nearby. And I've traveled a lot. I enjoy all those different rivers I showed you, and especially like the Wakaiba and some of the other ones around the state, Loxahatchee, and the Panhandle rivers are all beautiful. And what is your photography setup? Like what sort of gear do you use? Well, right now I'm kind of spoiled because I found this uh, Canon G3X camera, which is small. It can fit in my dry bag real easy and it has a 600 millimeter zoom lens so I can zoom in on alligators and different birds, mm -hmm. not get too close to them. Before that, I had a pretty cumbersome um, camera I had to put out a big, big long lens and uh, it was a bit cumbersome, a little bit tricky in a kayak. I still have that outfit, but I don't take it in a kayak anymore. Thank goodness technology <laughs> has allowed us to get good content that's not as bulky to carry around. Right. I mean, a lot of photographers, they, they take wonderful shots, but a lot of those shots they have not taken in a kayak or they're along the, you know, along the road in a wildlife refuge or something with a big lens and a tripod. And those are great, great photos. But I, I just don't have room to take all that gear in a kayak. <laughs> yeah, I would probably tip it over if I tried to. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Um, are there any other questions anyone has? Give it just a second, see if anybody's typing any. I wanted to mention there's lots of places around the state. Most of these rivers have outfitters. You can rent kayaks. If you're not used to kayaking, you can, uh, they often lead trips, guided trips. There are clubs around the state you can go with that that lead trips. Uh, we lead trip, trips in this area with the Apalachico River Keeper. We don't charge, we just have a donation basis. And we supply the kayak. So there are many places you can, you can go. And there's some places you can go and take a motorboat ride on rivers too. Uh, and many state parks have that feature in other places. So mm -hmm. there's lots of opportunities to explore. Awesome. And um, Wendy actually has two more questions for you. The first okay. one is, have you ever met anyone who does your form of photography via stand-up paddleboard? I've never met anybody. Uh, I've seen people take photos in a stand-up paddleboard, but not um usually a lot of times they take them with just their phone they'll keep their phone in a dry box and they'll pull it out and the phones take some good pictures these days so yeah. i don't overlook that possibility i've seen some really good photos with the smartphones and so forth yeah um, but i haven't and seen then, a book look out i think this book is unique in the sense of a lot of the photos were from a kayak and it's it's meant to kind of celebrate the rivers and not just delve on problems or anything like that, but it does cover some of the ways you can help our rivers in the, in the last chapter. Awesome. And then her second question, how does she get on your river photography trips if she wants to join in? Well, the, the trips um, I lead for the Apalachicola River Riverkeeper, they're not just for photography, but they are for anybody. And that's um, um, the website is just look up Apalachicola River Keeper and you will find our website and there's a link for the outings and you'll see a link for those different outings. We do hikes as well. And those are starting up um, late October when the weather's a little cooler. Um, I don't least, I don't lead any outings uh, other than that. Uh, I just go pretty much on my own or with some friends. Awesome. Um, here, uh, she's asking how to spell the name of that river. It do you, yeah. do you know how to spell it? Can you type it in there possibly? Oh, yes. Let me let me do that. Cool. Uh, if you, you just bear with me, I'll I'll get their website up. Awesome. Um, awesome, awesome. Second. And I did want to mention for anyone um, who would like to check out Doug's book, where we are going to be getting a few copies of it in our collection. So you can um, read it uh, and you know see more about the rivers and the photos that he took. 
Um, and also the recording of this program will be uploaded to our library's YouTube channel, which is just Boynton Beach City Library. And it'll also remain on our Facebook page. Um, so you can see it there too. Thank you. Awesome, thanks. And he just and put that is, link uh, in the chat. Just put the link for that. And um, you have to scroll down in different places, but you'll see a link for our, our outings, outings, and you'll see a link for the trail guide. I list a lot of the creeks I showed you and some of the rivers in the area. I have maps and uh, descriptions on how to, how to uh, find them. There's also the state um, Office of Greenways and Trails has where I used to work, uh, has maps and descriptions of the different rivers around the states that are designated by the state. And I'll put that link in the chat real quick. Let me get that for you too. Mm -hmm. um, and so it has everything you pretty much need to, uh, if you want to go on your own to find one of these rivers, um, you can do that. Perfect. But they also mentioned the outfitters are on the, the different rivers as well. Very cool. So let me type that in. And okay. uh, I don't see Put any other questions. There. So I guess this is the last call. If anybody has anything else, um, definitely check out the links that uh, Doug sent in the chat. Um, yeah, so I will just wrap it up then if nobody has any other questions. Thank you again, Doug, for doing this for us. We love your programs and definitely anytime you have a new book, let us know. We'd love to, you know, do another one with you. Um, and thank okay. you to everyone you. who had questions for him and uh, just for participating in today's program. Uh, we hope to see you at other Boynton Beach City Library programs in the future and have a great day. Thank you, everybody. All right, bye. Bye.